Welcome to Course 10, Reviewing a Pulse Oximetry Report. In this course, we will be reviewing the Pulse Oximetry Report. This is a report that a doctor can look at after the patient has completed the home pulse ox screening. Now let's take a look at the report you'll be receiving. The report on the patient has graphical input, both in a compressed and expanded form. Compressed format is on the first page and includes five key graphs that we'll review in more detail later. There are also several pages of expanded data. This information will not be covered in this module. The front overview page divides the report into pattern-based and traditional outputs. Pattern-based outputs are summarized in a set of bar graphs on this report. In all of the graphs, green represents normal values, and red areas represent moderate to severe values. So when looking at any of these graphs, it's important to note that if any of the results are shown in the orange to red areas, that means the patient is at high risk, or there are other health issues. So green is good, red is bad. Here's an example of results falling within the green area or a normal representation. Anything that appears in the red area needs to be looked at and represents, typically, high risk. So, there is an overview of a pulse ox report. Now let's take a look at some of the detailed information of the graphs that appear on the first page. The first component we'll be looking at is the Respiratory Disturbance Index. Respiratory Disturbance Index is the average number of hypopneas, apneas, and respiratory effort-related arousals that the patient is experiencing per hour. Recall earlier in our training we talked about the apnea-hypopnea index, but with this report, the Respiratory Disturbance Index, or RDI, is our best effort at determining what the patient's AHI will be. So as we look at the RDI, we can determine or estimate the severity of the patient's sleep apnea. Again, it's calculated by looking at the total number of hypopneas, apneas, and reras, and then dividing that by the total hours of sleep. Recall that an apnea is where airflow ceases for 10 seconds or more. In this picture, we see the apnea represented at the top portion of the picture of the airflow, where the line is a straight line. That's indicating that there is no airflow. If that's 10 seconds or more, that's considered to be an apnea. A hypopnea is a reduction in airflow for 10 seconds or more and accompanied with a 4% or more reduction in oxygen saturation. In this graph, we see the chair-like effect of the airflow, and it has been reduced by 50%. When this is accompanied by a blood oxygen level drop of 4% or more, that is then classified as a hypopnea. RERAs are events that are 10 seconds or more where upper airway resistance causes an arousal. And again, we see the airflow graph with a reduced airflow. So with those terms, we now have what we use to calculate the RDI. The RDI is shown on the graph on the far left. Again, you'll see at the base of the graph, it is green, and when we move to yellow, orange, and red. You can also see at about the 10 level, the graph starts to turn into red. So we know that mild apnea is 5 to 15. So anyone that scores a 5 or higher, we consider being at risk for sleep apnea. The RDI, again, defines the number of desaturations per hour. And we also adjust for mild desaturations. Most disturbances require at least a 4% drop in oxygen. Mild desaturations can be calculated as a 2% drop along with another event, such as a pulse rise. When we look close up at the graph, we see three numbers. On the left side of the graph are the number of arousals. These are small desaturations that are accompanied by some other event, such as a pulse rise. In this example, the number of minor desaturations is seven. On the right side of the graph, we see the number of desaturations equal to or greater than 4%. In this example, the numbers of desaturations are 10. In order to determine the overall respiratory index, we simply add the two numbers together. In this example, the 7 from the minor desaturations 
plus the 10 of the major desaturations gives us a total index of 17. In this report, we are estimating that this patient's AHI is approximately 17. That's how the respiratory disturbance index graph works. Now let's take a look at cycling time percentage. So first of all, let's talk about what is cycling time. The cycling time indicator represents the percentage of total study time that the pulse ox exhibits a cycling pattern. It is shown on the third graph from the left. Pulse ox cycling pattern is defined as three or more desaturations occurring within 120 seconds of each other. Desaturation must be 2% or greater, followed by the recovery within 10 seconds. This is an example of high cycling time. It's important to note that apnea can often occur in cycles during the patient's sleep. Because of that, we are able to determine or estimate whether the patient is going through an apnea or hypopnea cycle. The total percentage of time that the patient is cycling versus sleeping normally is demonstrated on the graph. In this example, the patient is cycling for 29% of the evening. That's considered high. Anything below 10 starts to fall below the moderate range and anything five or lower is normal. So again, the cycling time is the total amount of time, percentage of time that the patient is in a cycling mode, which is oftentimes representative of an apnea or hypopnea cycle. Now that we've learned about the cycling time, let's discuss the cycling severity index. The cycling severity index is also shown on the graph as well. As we've seen, we can counter the number of desaturations a patient has and average them over the night. But one of the problems with counting desaturations is that a low number does not mean that the patient does not have severe sleep apnea. Severity depends on many other factors other than the simple count per hour. For this reason, new severity indices are being created. On the report, the cycling severity index is shown on the far right. And again, similar to the other graphs we're using, green is considered mild risk, yellow to orange is considered moderate risk, and anything in the red range is considered high or severe risk. In calculating the cycling severity index, you'll look at several factors, including the depth of the desaturation. For example, if a desaturation goes from 96 to 92%, that still qualifies as a desat because it's 4%. But if a desaturation lasts for, let's say, a minute and goes from 96 to 80, that would be considered a very deep desaturation and a bigger problem. Both score as one event, but the one that goes deeper is a bigger problem, and that's calculated in the severity index. Also, the duration between desaturations and the recovery time is important. The patient has a desaturation and then doesn't have another one for an extended period of time. Then that's of less concern than a patient desatting regularly with just seconds in between each desaturation. In this example, we see a severe case with a cycling severity index. This patient is considered to be off the chart. So we've looked at three components, respiratory disturbance index, cycling time, and the cycling severity index. All of these are important to look at, and if any of these are occurring within the red section of the graph, then we know that your patient is definitely at risk. If they are red in two or more areas, then we have a serious sleep apnea risk. The next two graphs are used to help you determine if there are potentially other problems with the patient not necessarily related to sleep apnea. The first one we'll look at is baseline drift. Baseline drift is an indicator of potential sleep hypoventilation. We'll see it as the second graph from the left. Again, the graph is shown as green and red, but notice on this graph the green is at the upper end of the graph, the red is towards the bottom. The saturation baseline drift represents the magnitude of the decline from the highest to the lowest oxygen saturation level during non-cycling time. Now that's a mouthful, 
What does that mean? Recall earlier we looked at cycling, and as we are looking at the patient, we are making the assumption that during cycling, the patient is experiencing apneas, hypopneas, or rheras. So in other words, they are having sleep apnea type events during cycling time. During the times that they are cycling, we expect their oxygen level to drop. However, when the patient is not having respiratory events or sleep disordered breathing events, and we see a significant drop in their pulse ox, then we know there's potentially other problems. In this example, we see that the baseline drift is 17.6%. And you'll see that it drops into the red section. That tells us there's a problem, and the patient should then be referred to a specialist. So this is an excellent graph. This is your safety valve. This is telling you that there are other problems. And if this graph appears in the red, then we need to send the patient to a specialist. A normal baseline drift is 4 or less. Here's an example of a patient with a baseline drift of 2.6, well within the normal limits. So we can see, on average, the patient is not experiencing sleep apnea type of events. Their oxygen is between 97 and 94, well within the normal health range and of no concern. Finally, we'll take a quick look at the desaturation severity index. This is a complicated index, and I don't want to spend too much time reviewing it. But let's talk about briefly what it is. The Pulse Ox algorithm takes a look at all the most serious desaturations and looks at the 10% of the worst desaturations during the period of the study. The graph is then displayed down below. It's a smaller graph than the other four. The DSAT indicator on the left displays the mean amplitude of the desaturations. So what does that mean? We'll take a look at 10% of the worst desaturations and determine the average oxygen drop. So in this example on the left, we see that the number is 12. 12% 12 is the mean amplitude of the most severe events this patient experienced. And we can see by this graph, that's not good. Now we're in the orange section, so the patient is having bad desaturations. We'll also take a look at the right side of this graph, and I won't go into the detail on this, other than to say that we take a look, again, at the lowest 10% of desaturations, and take a look at what their drop is from baseline, normal, which in this case we assume to be 96%. So in this example, the patient is dropping 24 points from their main line, and you can see this is well within the red area. So the important thing to remember about this graph is if these numbers appear in the orange or red section, we have to take a closer look at the overall saturation of the patient. In this case, the patient is dropping, on average, 24 percentage points from their baseline, and that's a concern. So there's our desaturation severity index. There's a lot of interesting material here. This is an extremely helpful report in determining the patient's risk for sleep apnea. Again, the key is to look at the graphs and determine if the patients are in the orange to red area, which indicates high risk. And if their baseline drift graph is in the red, we need to refer the patient to a specialist. We'll continue to work and have additional courses on this material, but at least you now have a basic sense of how this report works.